Hey there folks, looks like it's time again to replace the cells in this early rigid lithium pack here, this compact one. I've done this once. No cells weren't so great really, but it lasted a few years. But now it, it will no longer charge at all and the performance has been terrible of late. I don't remember what I did to it to get these cells in here, so we'll have a look at that first. Okay. Oh, that's even got one of those old Makita cells in there already. I thought I had five of these. Alright. Anyway, you can see what I've done here is soldered pieces of my tabbing material that I have a roll of onto the old so that I could weld through it. The factory stuff is a bit thicker and I'm not able to turn my welder up any higher. But it does perfectly on this, uh, I, believe, I believe it's five thousandths that I'm using. So anyway, oftentimes I can use these and make a good connection one more time if I tear them neatly off the spot welds here with, say, a crappy old knife. Perfect. Let's see what I can do here. Just weasel it in there. Ah, oh, that's getting all wrinkled up. Now it'll probably be easier to solder some new tabs on there. So this battery isn't too important to me, and it's certainly not worth putting real money into. Uh, for power tools, I prefer never to use the compact batteries anymore. I just wait until the high capacity ones are on sale. They're so much nicer. So I think I'm going to try to get enough old Makita cells here or cells from Makita's. Makita doesn't make cells. But uh, I have these because of that uh, annoying Makita problem where the uh, circuitry disables itself forever when the battery has gone bad. So even if you replace the cells, it, they will no longer be recognized by the Makita charger. And I can't find anyone who has figured out how to re-enable one of those. So, I will go through these with my testing process and try to find five of a similar capacity that will go well together. Pretty much just rip these apart and I'll we'll have to grind the old bits of tabbing off of here. Of the ones that I decided to use. So, the first test when selecting used cells to reuse would be the voltage. What voltage have they managed to maintain while being thoroughly neglected? And usually if they have a couple volts that's a good sign. 2.47 1 not so much 2.6 Nothing 1 There's 2.5 Nothing at all that looks a bit leaky. Nothing. Four. Have they been using that? That's too good. Two and a half. Hmm. 
Nothing. And four. All right, well, it looks like we've got enough good ones there. I'll just carefully clean these up. So now I've got to charge all these up for testing, and I'm just going to charge the ones that read similar voltage together to save time in series here. Four cells. Off we go. And now to individually load test the cells. There we go. Boy, good quality lithium cells are just amazing. That is consistent performance. That is six cells on one graph. Oh, if you could see the graphs I did in the NICAD days. They didn't look like that. But we've got one deviant, and as usual, it's number five. Goodbye, number five. And that's our pack. And so I'll start by extending the old tabs here with a piece of the stuff I work with so that I can weld through it. Just try to solder this on. See if I can do a better job on this one by starting out at the correct angle. And here comes the first series connection. Let's determine the length of tabbing there. I'll just clean up this balance lead with my little rotary wire brush here. And I'll just attempt to solder this new tab onto the balancing lead. Not pretty, but it does the job and leaves a proper area for spot welding here. As you can see, I could have mounted the new tab just a little bit lower, but it's okay. Now just do that with the rest of them. And now it's fully prepared for cells. Time for the weldy bit. I'll just place all of the cells in here, starting with the correct polarity at the correct end, and then proceed in alternating polarity 
positive to negative, positive to negative, because they are in series. Now, with these all held in place with their bottom piece there and a bit of electrical tape for now, we can weld. for four good spots on each connection. You've got to hold these leads down quite firmly or that happens. And you blow a big hole in a perfectly good cell and you have to go back to that slightly less impressive deviant cell. Come on, number five. Come on back. There we are. Good old number five. It was never such a bad cell. So anyway, you hold it down quite firmly. Quite firmly. There we go. Wonderful. And with those all welded up, I may reinstall it in the case and see what the rigid charger thinks of it. Preparing for disappointment. Hey, it says it's full. What does it know? So I was so busy telling other people how to do things that I actually made a hideous mistake there. So spot what it was and say so in the comments for a million points. Let's try this again. Huzzah! So the point here is, I was able to quickly fix my hideous mistake and I totally got away with it. So if you're interested in the spot welder I was using, I have a video about that right about there. And you may, of course, ask further questions about it in the comments on this video or that one. And don't forget to indicate whether you liked or disliked this video by clicking the appropriate button. If you're liking my videos, or if you hate my videos and you want to be notified when it's time to come and complain about them, don't forget to subscribe. And it's all charged up. Let's see what kind of output this thing has. Good tone there. I think that'll do just fine. Thanks for hanging out, guys.